continue to write to you in spite of your silence, so that the bond won't be broken, so that one day I won't come upon a stranger who might be my father, so that I won't forget you. Is it still a matter of anger? Anger over my forthright announcement? A string of words which changes the course of my life, but not yours. Do you not want to speak with me, to hear my laughter? Strangely, the less I see you, the more I become like you. I find you in mirrors. I have your hair. I have the warmth of your hands in mine, even in the middle of winter. I surprised myself by wearing the turtlenecks I hated as a child. You know the ones you always wore when we lived in London? I have the same ball patch in my beard when I go without shaving. I hope the strange adventure you're on is bringing you happiness. Raising pigs in Israel? Couldn't you play golf like everyone else? Are you hoping to provoke God? To get an answer? I hope you'll find one and come back to me. Send my regards to your pigs. You, who never let me have so much as a goldfish. I have an offer to make you. I'm listening. How about instead of watching your shitty play again, <laughs> you let a handsome man take you to dinner? That sounds awesome. Let me know if you find any. I should just leave you here for that. How are you, sir? Hi, Mr. Rosenberg. Mr. Rosenberg? How are you, sir? I'm a strong. I don't need. Come on. What? We, we have a problem. Yeah. Mr. Rosenberg? Mr. Rosenberg? Twelve nipples, thirteen piglets. This one is a little one. Yeah. He's weak. Oh, he's weak. Yeah. So wait a minute. So I still don't follow. I. You want me to give him the bottle? Yes. Here I got. Here I got. It's quite. Okay. okay I'll try it. I mean, uh -huh. it's a little ridiculous. Uh huh. Yeah. I shouted. Still nothing. I shouted. I rang the doorbell, and he just rocked his pig. Cradling it like a baby, can you imagine? Pretending not to hear me, I think the man's a degenerate. 
Did you date it at the top? Yes. Are you going to start? Scrub, scrub, Rivka. You need more detergent. I did that already. Never gonna get this pig off me. Do you think we should just throw it all out? Check the door and maybe one washing isn't enough. Dad, are you going to start? Yes, okay. So. Dear Mr. Rosenmark, this is my third letter to you regarding your pig farm. It's your second letter. Exactly. You want to point out that it's only my second letter, which you can only do by replying and acknowledging that you received my first one. Clever. Very clever. Yes, yeah, so please don't make me explain my strategy every other sentence. Have a Ready. This is my third letter to you regarding your pig farm. You want me to write it again? No, I'm just starting again. Oh, okay. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? You can't wake me up like this every night. I can't take it. Hey. What, what are you doing? I need my sleep, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna turn... Hey, hey, okay. Oh, God. Here. Don't bite my toes. Come on. What does the snake represent? Evil. Yes, and what else? A penis. That's not funny, Benjamin. Pardon me. Hey, Mos. You have a reply from the farmer. Ah, good. Shall we hear what the miserable pig farmer has to say for himself? Yes. Yes, yes of course. Dear yes. Rabbi, I have followed your... You read very well, but direction. please pass it to Binyamin. I put the pigs on stilts like Hawaiian bungalows over the ocean. Never shall a hoof brush the earth of the Holy Land. Except, of course, for when you buy them from me to chase off the terrorists. In the New York Times last month, I saw a Sahel soldier with a pig on a leash and I must say, it discredits your top guy reputation. Okay, give it to me. I am a man who is respectful of religion, although I don't practice it myself. I didn't mean to offend you, though you appeared to mean to offend me by calling me a degenerate shigitz. Oh. Well, I had to make him react. Mind you, this will not change the fact that Israeli Jews are gorging themselves on bacon and that I am a man who sells it to them through one restaurant alone in Tel Aviv. Eggs and bacon, whether you like it or not, are on the menu. They're very popular. And so tell me, Mr. Rabbi, what exactly is the story behind the use for pig's blood? You know the one in which bags of porcine blood were hung in the city buses to deter terrorists from blowing themselves up, splashing themselves with it, making them impure, barring them from paradise? If you can secure me this contract with public transport, I won't have to sell them any more bacon. I figured that, given your politics being so different from the other rabbis, you know your open-mindedness and all, hmm? you'd understand me. As for the road, I will continue to use it. You can't prevent me from practicing my trade. What do we think of that? Harry one, rabbi zero. Dr. Schwimmen! Dr. Schwimmen! Dr. Swimming! Dr. Swimming, wait! Annabelle. Hi. I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. I know, I need to talk to you. What can I do for you? I'm kind of in a jam. I need to cancel our session tomorrow because I can't pay you. But I know that if I cancel now, I'm still going to owe you for tomorrow anyway. And why can't you pay? My dad, he hasn't transferred my money in nine weeks. Your money or his? Are we on the clock right now? You're 34 years old, Annabelle. I'm also still a student. Lots of us still are. You guys left us a shitty economy. You know, I've been thinking of getting a skateboard to ride to work. <laughs> what? You don't think I could pull up a skateboard? No, you're probably right. What a ridiculous thought. I'm too old to pull off a skateboard, and you're too old to have an allowance. You'll come at five tomorrow as per usual. And once you get that paycheck and that first job you're gonna start looking for, you can pay me then. Now hit that payment, Annabelle. Thank you, I will. As soon as I get back from New York, I'm 
visiting my mom. She's paying for the ticket, by the way. What's this? This is the name of an excellent child psychiatrist. He has great results with adolescents in just your situation. So, can you help me or not? You've been there for three hours for crying out loud. I tried everything. Your neighbor, Milad, that grows cows? He will have she to- She raises, raises cows. What? Raises, I mean, you don't grow cows. Listen, I'm talking English on top of this telephone pole with a place full of pigs. Give me a break with your grammar lessons. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So what about this neighbor that grows cows? Doesn't want a wire that goes through a land full of pigs, through his own farm. He's a religious Muslim. And then the other way, there is Mrs. Lapierre. Miss Israel of 65 or whatever. She said that Nazareth belonged to the Christians. Jesus land. But she thinks you're nice. I know that. Um, yeah, she comes over to my house. Uh, she wants me to take her to dinner. She schleps through the mud here with these high heel shoes to give me these baskets of fruit. She's a fan. I mean, is there any other solution or? The only solution I see is to go east via the new settlement. All the way down there? Yeah. Oh my God. This is the right time to invoke his name. Do you have one of those? Um... You know, like one of those rooms where you get to talk to each other, uh, video the thing, you know, like a chat thing. What do they call it, a chat? Oh, uh, <laughs> FaceTime or Skype? There you go. In less than a minute, you'll be talking to Monica. Monica? I don't want to talk to my ex-wife. Well, then why is she the first in your contact? Is that a green juice? You really are having a crisis, aren't you? Welcome to Skype, Gary. Just another way for you to show David that you can be in touch, but you just don't want to. Monica, you have to stop talking for one minute. You called me. Maybe you had an intuition. I'm having an MRI today. I've been feeling very dizzy, Harry. She was well. Uh, good luck with that, and um, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Well, thanks for your concern. You're a hypochondriac, Mark. Okay? Well, it's my turn. Ignore our son, cut off our daughter, and dismiss me for your ridiculous pig family. Harry. Harry. How do I shut her off? You gotta listen to Just me. press the button with the phone on it. What does it say about us that our 34-year-old daughter can't make her rent? I mean, whatever There are two buttons with phones on. One, one has red and one has green. Harry, speaking of purse strings, you would not believe. I had dinner. Well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna hang up now. You um, believe her jewelry. Bye-bye. Harry! Asshole. God. That woman. Get this. Are you Rabbi Katan? Yes, I am. Yeah. Ah, I was wondering, uh, are you planning on sticking these fucking signs all over the city? You must be the pig farmer. Nice to meet you. I'm not here to be nice. I'm here to tell you if you don't stop harassing me, I'm gonna get very, very angry. Really? What are you gonna do? Beat me? You're a hundred years old. Hundred, huh? You, my friend, are three feet tall. Are you finished? Because my children are waiting for me. I am not finished. This country has laws, and you, my friend, have no right to tell me whether I can raise pigs or fucking alligators, okay? That's the government's job. You're in a Jewish country. You're aware of that. You're aware that it's my country as well, aren't you? Yes, I am. So why don't you cleanse yourself and stop humiliating us all with your disgusting animals? Cleanse yourself? Get rid of the stupid beard and the fucking hat and the coat when it's 98 degrees in the shade. You look like you escaped a fucking medal award, you moron. Mr. Rosen... Mr. Rosenmark, come to Shabbat. Shabbat this.
Dad, I can't seem to get any news from you. I think I'm beginning to understand how David must feel. I cried and cried over my little wounded heart, and for the first time, you weren't there. How could it be that the tears I cry, when they evaporate, end up in the same clouds as the sea? Or the flushed water of a toilet? Were you afraid I was gonna leave you or something? There ought to be a doctor for sorrow. Not a psychiatrist or an acupuncturist, no soft science guru. I mean a real doctor. The kind who can identify the source of my sorrow and disinfect it. Hey, Dad. You also. Mm -hmm. My boss. It would sting painfully, and then it would be over. They'd smooth it with a pink paste like candy or marshmallow for a toothless child, and then my pain would be smothered rather than me. You're the only one with whom I can share my heartbreak. Do you remember Esmeralda? I must have been four years old when I first loved a boy. I told him, I love you, Tommy. I want to be your girlfriend. And breathe. And he said, I like Esmeralda more. I walked out of the school. I weighed it so the other kids wouldn't see. And I blew my nose into your shirt while I told you of my heartbreak. And hold your breath. Without a word, you consoled me. And breathe. I wolfed down a Belgian waffle and we sang in the car. I'm leaving Brussels for New York. This winter is just too cold. I fear spring will never come, that it's a lost season, like the love there used to be in my heart. I've always tried to think of my patients as not having families. No attachments, no dependents, no history. I try to make them abstract, try to make them cases to be tended to. I try to look behind the life in their faces. Otherwise, I fall apart. You understand? Do you want me to find another doctor? <laughs> no. The first time we met, he answered the door to Harry and I. He was the handsome doctor. I was a French intern. <laughs> you were barefoot, remember? In that big apartment your parents had on East 74th? You saw Harry first. He has a way to be seen first. And it was already too late. I knew I could not compete. You are so sunny, so beautiful. And I said to myself, this woman will always be beautiful. How much time do I have? We can slow it down. I'm asking for, I'm asking for a number. It's hard to say. I'm not sure we should go through chemo to steal a few more months. Tell me, Michelle. It will help me. Having time to prepare is a luxury, don't you think? People live like they're never going to die. I want to take advantage of that hedge. I want to turn wasted time into precious time. A year, more or less. 
آنی همانیک That's the crack from the times. Brief and to the point. You're a hopeless old schmuck. Why don't you talk to your son? Yell at him. Have an argument. Anything would be better than a crotchety silence. On the other hand, I have to thank you. I have been invited to all the New York dinners ever since you started breeding pigs. <laughs> Every time I tell the story, it's a hit. Although, I'm not sure it's doing anything to reduce anti-Semitism. Dear Monica, you call that brief? Your letter was two pages long. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have serious work to do. Dear Harry, raising pigs in Israel doesn't make you a rebel. It makes you a food pornographer at the best. You are the Larry Flint of bacon. <laughs> Harry Flint in the Middle East. Dear Monica, wearing high heels in New York doesn't make you Carrie Bradshaw. You did manage to raise a gay son and an eternally teenaged daughter to avoid hearing the word granny, but still. Dear Harry, you missed the premiere of David's play. It's wonderful to know that you have kids that love you and are so proud to have you as a mother. You, on the other hand, are getting a really bad rap. You follow me? 
No. <laughs> Where's that shitty little bike of yours? You going on a date? I'm going to visit my mother's grave. I'm sorry. You going on a date? Yeah, I'm going to see an old rabbi friend of mine. Mm. What do you um, rabbis talk about when you get together? Torah. Mm. Wow, that sounds great. You do the first bath, and then another. Don't leave them in too long, okay? It's gonna take us all day. When was the last time you processed? Years. It's been years. And they say I'm the crazy one. Dear Dad, Annabelle finally found courage to develop the picture she took on 9-11. That day was the first day I ever made love with another man. And it felt so right and so wrong at the same time. It's strange how human beings confuse the world's stories with their own. How self-absorbed we are, even in the face of horror. It felt like the towers were my fault. It felt as if my cries and moans drowned out all of the ones buried in the asphalt. as if my chest pressed against the chest of another man played a part in this awful tragedy. You see? Mom! I told her not to come in. Can you please? Your eyes are all red like those albino rabbits that they sell in the pet store. Yeah, we were in the dark. Did you see the times? No, did you? That prick pretended to be asleep. He has some very strong opinions about your play. It's nine in the morning. So when do you think the paper comes out? I just really wanted to spend some time alone with David. Well, I want to spend time with the two of you. And I brought bagels. <laughs> Go on. Good, good, good. <laughs> no, leave him alone. When you go down, put your hand behind the pinky. Pocket towards me. Look, once you play, the idea is if you catch her on the ground, your hand is here. Why? Why? Because you can go in and get it out and throw it to where you have to throw it. Okay. If your hand is here. Do you see any baseball at all? Yeah, of course. Where? Sports channel. Yes, mm -hmm. Sports channel. Yes, <laughs> Oh, and on television. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Rosenberg, yeah. oh. I noticed you have a special affection for this pig, so I took the liberty of sewing him this. Oh, thank you. Affection, um, it's more like, uh, you know, his, his mother deserted him as a child and, and as a pig. Led you know, Harry, 
to have affection for someone is nothing to be ashamed of. No, of course not. <laughs> Thank you so much. But as a girlfriend. Come on in. Oh, hello. I'm Father of the Abuse of Nazareth. How do you do? We haven't met in person, but I've written to you. Y you are Ari Rosenmeyer, yes? Uh, yes, Rosenmerk. Uh, have a seat, please. Thank you. Um, can I offer you a drink? Oh, thank you. I'm fine. I prefer not to indulge. Ah. Well, then you defy the stereotype. <laughs> Water? That, too, is an indulgence. Without a doubt, among the finest gifts the Almighty has granted us. Of course. Forgive me. Rosenmert? Is that Belgian? Mark Rosenmerk. It's Polish. I'm Belgian. Yes, I could tell right away. Um, and if you'll please excuse me, the mess here is my little pet over there, uh, Judas. Judas? You amuse yourself, mocking our religion? Um, no. No, that's not, not it at all. It's just a long story. What can I do for you, Father? We want you to leave and give back to the church what rightly belongs to us. What might that be? This land. According to various documents, even the emotions that descend upon me when I set foot here. It's on this spot that our Savior Jesus Christ left. This place belongs to humanity. You are living on the remains of Jesus' home. Can you feel it? Don't you feel those vibrations? Do you feel it, Mr. Rosalmet? Rosenmark and, uh, no. Mm -hmm. You'll be receiving a letter from the Pope, who, unlike you, doesn't see this as a laughing matter. He might come see you himself. I'm getting a little tired, so... Maybe you can write this all down and mail it to me, okay? I have. And you haven't replied. Hmm. We are already in motion. We are going to change the world by buying this plot of land from you, Mr. Rosenmeyer. Once upon a time, there were the Jews, the Muslims, the Pope and me. And they all walked into this bar. <laughs> but, see, that's the beginning of a joke. You write me when you get the punchline, okay? You make yourself the punchline, Mr. Rosenmorv. You are the punchline. I'll be back because God is within me. And if Jesus makes his return, it won't be in a pigsty. <laughs> Take this. Really? Mm, yes. It's your favorite. It'll bring you luck. All right. I gotta go kiss your father for me. <laughs> Don't you think it's time you start kissing somebody else? Get him to call David if you can, okay? Well, well, slip this into the wailing wall for me. It's very important to me. You know, Tinder is way more effective than the wailing wall, Mom. Just do it for me. Okay, I will. Oh, and hun, here, I got. Here, just take this. It's okay, Mom. Dad's gonna take care of It's emergency funds, because you never know. Okay. I mean, buy some dresses. Get drunk. Find a husband. Oh, Jesus, Mom. Bye. <laughs> Gotta go. You know, I really um, only thought about the raising part. Never thought too much about the uh, butchering. It's going to be a delicious ham. <laughs> Let's just let them stay here a little longer because, look, the road's blocked. We'll never make it to the slaughterhouse. So let them stay a little bit, yeah? OK. No Paul goes to the Rabbi Katan? I'm going to the rabbi's house tonight for Shabbat dinner. Oh. What do you bring uh, a rabbi to dinner? What do you bring? I'm a Buddhist. <laughs> huh. Why don't you just Google it?
to make the perfect kela. You begin with a kilo and a half of spinach in a basin. You wash it, chop it up, and you fry it in a big pot. As soon as it begins to brown, you stir, 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 and you never stop so that it browns without burning. You have to be careful because this is an art. When the spinach is dark and crispy, you pour in two liters of water, a medium large onion diced. My aunt would get used to put the onion in before the water. My mother didn't. I don't know, there are two schools of thought on that one. Then you add three small cloves of garlic, peeled and crushed. Next, we add the spices, a dozen fresh mint leaves, chopped very, very fine, two spoonfuls of ground cinnamon, salt and pepper. As soon as the ingredients begin to melt, when it becomes a sort of bubbling magma, you add the meat, kosher, obviously. A sliced cow foot is good, a kilo of beef shoulder. I like to add a little veal myself, it's my own personal touch. And then you set it on a low heat for three to five hours, the longer the better, and you serve it up piping hot and you're in for a real treat. Rabbi? Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Rabbi. Oh, Shabbat Shalom. Here, I bought you a uh, book basket. That's very kind. I wanted to play it, uh, you know, kind of safe. <laughs> I'm supposed to make a phone call, and as you know, my farm gets no reception, so I was wondering somewhere where I could do it in private. Sure, be... go in the back, do it in the garden. Quickly, though, because Shabbat's coming in, you need to be off the phone. Oh, well, it's a good thing my phone plan is agnostic. <laughs> um, Mazel tov. Tov, everyone. Monica, you know, I, I got your message. What, what's so very important that I had to call right away? What is it? Your children all right? It's their mother. It's a real ball buster. I thought ball busters are supposed to live forever. Hey, Harry. Simon, hey, what's the uh, Simon? What you, you met my eldest, Shimon? Baruch Adonai, Mekadesh Amen. 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 
a trap, Kyla? No, I don't believe I am. It's better than it looks. For sure. <laughs> Trust you. Ooh. It's very good. Well, sometimes our wall seems to close in on us as though we built our own tomb. Well, I think we have too many walls anyway. You know, Harry, in my office I see these divorcing couples, these wounded women who we think we're appeasing by offering them money feel humiliated. They ask for more because they actually want something else, something they can't express. Because once you've lost it, you know it's gone forever. And the Palestinians are a proud people, but they seek to recover something that is long dead, the past. <laughs> Even if they had the entire land of Israel, they wouldn't be satisfied. Do you think that's enough politics? Yeah. <laughs> it's getting a little late, so I, I thought I'd just head home. No, you can't do that. That's a disgrace. What, what were you starting with the pig stuff again? No, I mean, yes, but no. As a rabbi, I must insist you don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> It's bedtime. Okay, good night. Why do you let them get like that? Son Shimon uh, is going to be 18 next month. He doesn't want to study the Torah all day, so he's going to join the army because this is Israel. Yeah. But he thinks that in life he should have more choices than God or war. You have a son, Mr. Rosenberg? I'm sorry, uh, but you're applying to adopt alone, and you've publicly declared your homosexuality, so... So? Those conflict? You travel a lot. Your income statements show professional instability. I'm one of the more prominent playwrights in the city. There's also your relationship with God. My relationship with whom? And again, your sexuality... I'm sorry, Mr. Rosenberg, but your application is denied. So what you're saying is, a homosexual playwright is unfit for fatherhood. That's not what I said. I think that's exactly what you said. In fact, you could have been a little less vulgar. Thank you for your time, ma'am. We'll have a baby, David. I'll make sure of that. Don't worry. Really? How's that? I'll find one. We'll steal one from the park. <laughs> <laughs> An ugly duckling no one's gonna miss.
Probably by mistake again? No, no, no. I'm trying to reach uh, Annabelle. She's not answering the phone. I, I, I'm, I'm getting a little worried. You know, we had some rocket fire. Uh, you know, I just hate that she's alone. You know, oh, look, I hate that. Look. Well, that doesn't make any sense because she texted me yesterday, so I know she's okay. I'll call David and see what's up. Yeah, okay, thanks. Harry? <clears throat> that, that fear, that dread? When you haven't heard from someone you love? Yeah. Two years before we separated, you left for a week with no explanation. You just said you had to do it. I thought if you were cheating on me, you, you would have come up with a better explanation, a, a real alibi. And now, I just need to know. Will you tell me where you went so we can leave it in the past? Well, uh, keep an eye out for uh, Animal for me, will you? I will. Monica. Yeah. Is that uh, uh, Michelle taking good care of you? Yes. He's always been in love with you, that son of a bitch. Last call for jealousy. The last leave dropped Marshall. Maze. Maze. Hey, many rala shatusa. I'm sorry, I don't I don't speak Hebrew. What are you doing here? Why do you want to cross? I just want to see. Either you have a reason to be there, or you're not crossing. I thought I just gave you a reason. Who are you? Are you a journalist? No, I'm not a journalist. I just want to see for myself. Look, I spent my childhood summers here, you and I just... your childhood memories with our big mean wall? Yeah, you did. As a matter of fact, yeah. Okay, may I at? I don't speak Hebrew, so What sir. is your nationality? American. In this country, where no one agrees about anything, 90% of actual Israelis wanted this war. After a room of dancing teenagers were blown up in a nightclub, we find a way to agree about one matter. Yeah, I remember that. You remember reading about it. You remember hearing about it. You don't remember it. If you cross to the other side, you might not be able to get back tonight. You don't mind humiliating entire families like that? They are humiliated because to them, it's a wall of segregation. To us, it's a wall of protection. Not humiliating, necessary for security. Okay, can I at least take some pictures, please? For your Instagram? No. Zuzi Mipo. Yalla! Move on. Yeah, okay, I got it. Hey, look, look, look what they sent me. Can you believe this? They're demanding a meeting at midnight. Where? Um, Our Lady of the Big Fright, something or other church. Uh, you know where it is? Harry, I'm a rabbi. I don't go into churches. If you went into a church eating Parma ham, would they cancel each other out, or, or would you go to hell twice? Listen, why don't you stop your stupid jokes, go home, forget about the priest. He's, he's a fanatic. He's not even a Catholic. The actual priest in Nazareth doesn't even speak to him because last year he tried to canonize a pizza that he thought was in the shape of the Virgin Mary. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah. Harry. What? Have you ever had chicken pox? Yeah, when I was six. Why? Three of my children have chicken pox. My wife has taken the car to the doctors, and there's no one to pick up shower from school. I'm on my way. Thank you. And stay away from the church. They'll try to crucify you. Or convert you. He says he doesn't know you. Of course he knows me. Oh, we see all kinds of things these days. I'm sorry, Mr. Rosemark. Uh -huh. oh, look, did, didn't his father tell you where I was coming here? He said an Ashkenazi was coming, which is a bit vague. Yeah. But look how afraid the boy is. I guess that's fine, then. Um, I understand. Thank you. That's enough. Had a good time. Get out of here, OK? Hmm? I've called the cops. Everyone knows you don't have a telephone. <laughs> well, everyone knows that you're a fruitcake. What does that mean? It means you are nuts. If I'm that crazy, then you'd better hurry up and accept our offer before you regret it. Is that a threat? I'm just a messenger. God has asked you to leave. Is he the same one? that notarized the act to buy my farm? It's not a farm. This is a Lord's home. Oh, why don't you put a fucking phone in it? Move over with your dress. <gasps> Sorry. Do you know what it's like? I don't know where the heck you are. I mean, you had to be nuts. We called, didn't know if you were okay, where you were. What are you thinking about? I wonder why we bury ourselves. Why do we bury ourselves when we're still alive, Dad? Here is Meralda and Tony's story. You gotta let that go. Anything that works backwards is kind of stupid. I also think that you have a whole lot of beautiful stories in front of you. Beautiful. They'll be there. Anyway, you're never going to die, right, Dad? No. How could I? You have years of therapy left. <laughs> You used to come here to have lunch with me. I always hoped you'd come one day to show me your breasts. And I'm here looking at your tumor. Do you find it sexy? <laughs> 
Come on, I'll take you downstairs. We have the best sushi in Manhattan. Everybody thinks they have the best sushi in Manhattan. And chiropractor. <laughs> we can't all have the best, can we? No, but actually mine is the best. I'm sure it is. Also happens to be the best chiropractor. It can fix your spine while you're eating sashimi. True talent. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Feels like I'm in a costume. I used to dress up as a rabbi before I became one, in truth. You're gonna become what you should be, and then the costume won't feel like a costume anymore. We're in costume and until we've found our way. And that takes time, Shimon, so. Don't worry.
that. Oh. Wow. That looks absolutely perfect, honey. <laughs> it's like a glove. I completely forgot there was such a thing as winter here. David asked me Listen, to... about the money. It's okay, Dad. I'm gonna try on my own. I, uh, I really think that it'll uh, make you much happier that way. What about you? Me what? Your pigs. <laughs> They're gonna make you happy? Yes, they, they, they would make me happy before I got sad. Okay. You know, you didn't stay very long uh, for me. <laughs> and um, listen, Annabelle, uh, look after your mother, will you? What makes you say that? Well, you know, children don't see their parents aging. I love you, baby. You be careful. So you still don't want to know the child's gender? No. Yes, we do. do anything else? Well, if I thought I was gonna die tomorrow, I'd, I'd go see Mrs. Azo. <laughs> Tell her what a bitch she was. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was always telling you that your, your drawings were strange. I mean, what kind <sighs> of person does that? Seriously, Mom, my first grade teacher? She was a terrible teacher. She was a bitch. <laughs> she was so uninspiring. She was a horrible teacher. I think it damaged you. What are you doing? I'm going to see Mrs. Azo. I've been holding that resentment for years. Mom! Sorry. Rabbi, when are you going to start letting me, you know, have my ham? in peace. How many little piglets have gone through your farm now, do you think? A couple hundred. What? And that little Judas pig, you, you like him a lot. You treat him like a child. Oh, yeah, I like him very much. How soon before you fry him in his own fat and eat him? Are you fucking nuts? I'm not going to eat him. Just his family, then. Uh, you know, if you want to shrink, they're very easy to find in Israel. That's really kind of you. Some religions, they ban the eating of pig because it's a, a cleanliness issue, it's a hygiene thing. But I have a different theory. They're very close to us in DNA. When that plane crashed in the Andes and the survivors ate the other passengers, they said it tasted like pork. Huh. If you singe your hair on your arm, it tastes like pork. Huh. And pigs themselves will do anything to survive. They'll eat their own garbage, they'll eat their own shit, they'll eat each other. We don't eat pigs to remind ourselves that we're human to distinguish ourselves from beasts. I asked Hassan, I said, why aren't Muslims allowed to eat pigs? What did he say? Oh, he said, 
Because God said so. You Jews, you think too much. No, it's because Judaism is not just a religion of faith, it's a religion of questioning. Mr. Jacob that writes those wonderful theater reviews in the Times. That's me. That's what I thought. You know, I was sitting next to you during David Rosen's new production. Oh, poor you. No, no, I love the play. Yes, but I, I found it really distracting because of your snoring. <laughs> yeah, I fell asleep almost instantly. Yes, you did, even before the curtain rose. So I was really surprised to see that you could even review the play. <laughs> no need to undress the fat girl to know she can't get you hard. <laughs> it's for my son and for all the beautiful fat girls out there. On behalf of them, go fuck yourself! Jesus. Bitch, look at me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have cancer. I'm sorry. Listen, okay, please forgive me. Please understand. Look, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying, and I just think it's really bad in the, to be mean. Just don't be mean.
wish to. Fuck! Fuck! Take me to that fucking church. Right now, Moshe. Come on. Not coming in. Don't do something stupid. I'll wait here. I'll wait here. At least put a shirt on. And join us for dessert. It's my 40th birthday. I can't. It's been months since you've left this apartment. I'm writing and you know it. Oh, yeah? To whom? That's not what I meant. Go and see your mother at least while she's here. Look, you can't tell me how to deal with this. Everyone reacts differently when faced with death. This isn't your death. How narcissistic can you be? This is her death. She's as thin as a rail. She's fading before our eyes. Do you know what she asks me? She wants me to keep bringing your fucking laundry, David. That's the only way she knows how to connect with you now. Through your filth. And you don't even want to see her? No one's asking you to confront death. She's a living woman. She's here. And she's fighting. And you won't even see her. This is just how we are in our family. I'm a prisoner to them. They're a prisoner to me. But we're family, in spite of everything. We're a family who never touches each other. We don't cook together, we don't eat together, we don't birth together, we don't die together. We write to each other. We feel each other from afar. That's not your family, that's your goddamn father. As soon as something scares you, you'll run away from it all. You keep away from what displeases you, what makes you uncomfortable. You're hiding behind him. And you're calling it love? But he's not even here. Fuck you. Fine. But if you don't go and face your mother, I'll leave you. I won't be able to come tomorrow, you know that. Yeah. Yom Kippur. Day of Atonement. Why do you say it like that? Say it like what? Why are you so damn paranoid? Anyway, you're not well, so... I won't encourage you to fast. 
Well, I won't. No. Harry Mosh, um... Thanks. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. Mr. Rabbi. Yes, Mr. Rosenmark. I was just, uh, wondering. Does... Does one have to declare friendship as one would declare love? I think so, Harry. But with silence. Ah. It gadal vi et kadash, shame rabba. Be alma di vera chirute, ve amlich marhute, be chaechon uve meechon uve chaye de chol, beit Israel, ba agala uvisman keriv, ve imru amen. Ve al kol Israel, ve imru amen. Ose shalom bim romav, hu ya ase shalom alenu, ve al kol Israel, ve imru amen. Sure. Come on in. What's up? You're out of breath. Feel all right? You'll never guess. 
That's what I did. Skydiving? First, I bought my granddaughter gifts. It's a girl. No one knows, but I know. Of course you know. I bought her everything a little girl could dream of. From birth to her 21st birthday. So I will always be here as her fairy grandmother. You'll always be here, no matter what. And Michelle, I let go of resentment. I confronted everyone I should have for years. And how do you feel? I feel alive. My children, I've had my share of sorrow and I've had my share of joy. When I became a mother, my life took on an entirely different meaning. I've done everything I can to leave you traces of who I am so that you can find the pieces to your own puzzle. I thought so many times that I was leaving too early before I could leave you an instruction manual for happiness. I thought I'd find happiness for you. It was my lifetime quest to find the formula that would bestow smiles on your faces always. Dear David, uh, when the phone rang, And Annabelle told me of her mother's passing. Um, I went to the bathroom. I locked myself in. And I shot. David. Annabelle, the idea that your names will keep echoing in an empty room reassures me and crushes me at once. When your father and I parted, and you spent nights at his house, I lay myself in your beds and imagined that I was stroking your hair, hushing you to sleep why you slept under his roof. I, I imagined that somehow, deep within, you could feel it from afar, and that it calmed you. Surely I was fooling myself, and it was me who fell asleep imagining your warm bodies near my own. The last tears I cried went back to your birth, and they ran with joy. I didn't cry for my mother, but uh, I cried for yours. Wherever it is I'm going, I'll be with you. And every night, you'll feel my hand on your head. That's a promise.
Allô? Annabelle? Is broken. <laughs> we all have strengths we're not aware of, as well as sorrows. It's to you whom I write. It's to you I turn. You to whom I haven't spoken in more than six years. One day, you become the child of your children. And that day has come. I imagine your pain and your remorse at not having seen your mother in her last few days. I understand what you did. I'm sorry. We can't accept those we love immortal. I did the same thing with you. I decided that none of it was real that the David you imposed on me only existed for others and that mine wasn't gone. In my mind, David is married to a beautiful blonde woman. In my mind, David has a son and I bounce him on my knee. In my mind, David is a doctor. And we played chess together. I th think I know what makes him tick, but he just beats me every time. I don't know that deep within David is not so simple. In my mind, David doesn't kiss other men on the mouth. My mind is full of tears regrets and time that's far too short i was angry with you and i'm still angry with you i'm angry with you that my mother emerged from the camps where my father died that she carried me in the face of horror that the sickly infant I was had to struggle to survive and that I then brought you into this world so you could stop everything right here. As if you were giving a reason to death itself, to the end of our family name, to the shadows. But who gives a damn, right? I mean, who cares about the names? survivors they died too everything comes to an end including me especially me i'll be there thursday for the cottage put the one i loved into the ground and i'll protect you and your sister under the toilet of a father and soon all three of you because monica isn't with us anymore, but another has already arrived. Forgive me, my son. My silence is... David, it made the sound of love.
Yeah.